Welcome back, ladies and germs, to another episode of Manga Trends Dub Theater, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English-size them, and then... <sighs> make funny noises. I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and magisterial oak tree, Nicholas Tyson. Today, we have another exciting installment of Kabashiman Oda's Shochan Adventures. In our previous episode, Squirrel and Show somehow got transported back to feudal Japan. It's never really explained how that happened. And Show himself does battle with the devil. You can check out that episode on this channel, but today we have... Mori no Aki, Autumn in the Woods. Let's get started. Bracing themselves against the autumn wind, Squirrel and Sho went down a narrow road through the mountains. Feels like it was summer just yesterday. Time flies, I guess. A number of lovely white birches stood amongst a copse of oak trees. Um, oak trees... is Well, they're literally Mizunara, which is technically a kind of oak, but whatever. The view from this high up, it's amazing. Gives me the goosebumps. By and by, the path entered onto a pale dark forest, or a pale dark forest. Literally pale dark. This good eye. From here, the trail heads into the woods. Looks kind of gloomy. Their attention was suddenly drawn by a sound to their right. You hear that? An invisible thread was drawing the pair deeper into the woods. This is weird. There's no straight way to get through. The trail came to an end at the base of a massive oak tree. Now show, we can't be too careful. You're right. There was no wind, and yet they could see the tree's branches and leaves rustle as they moved. Whoa! That's when a voice spoke out from the trunk, telling them to break off a single leaf and head to the south. Have you no doubt there is work here to be done? Sho thought it all rather strange. But he did what he was told and snapped off an oak leaf. What do you think it's for? Not a clue. So they headed south, where the mountainside was thick with autumn flora. The trees here have hardly any branches. Where do you think they all went? On a distant peak, there stood a silver castle that shone dazzlingly in the sun. Oh, wow! It's made entirely of silver! Man, what a pretty castle! Far up ahead, there was a dust cloud rising, and from within, they could hear the thundering of hooves. Hey, what's that? We, we, we should probably hide. After some time, a host of creatures, half man, half horse, appeared before them. Ra-da! <laughs> so, this is where I, as your humble translator, have to admit, I'm not really sure what sound a centaur is supposed to make in Japanese. I guess they're just roaring or grunting. So, like, ra But I like the Japanese. I'm like, ra-da, ra -da! Each one carried with him an iron bow in his hand, and together they crowded about the castle gate. Open up! If you don't, we'll kill you all! That was when a woman carrying a shield ran out through the gate. You think we just hand the castle over to you? A cry rang out for the centaurs to loose their arrows, and the two sides fought till the setting of the sun. Actually, she says, Nani! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? As the sun sank in the west, the centaurs all went back the way they came. And the women who had fought so hard carried their injured back into the castle on their shields. 
That's when Sho stood up from within the shadow of a nearby hill. Squirrel, let's go see what happened. I, I don't know. W looks dangerous. In the darkness, they mingled with the throng of women and snuck into the castle. And shortly after, they caused quite a commotion when their presence was discovered. Somehow a child has slipped in unnoticed. You will have to answer to the queen. The women said Squirrel and Show must be spies, so they tied the pair of them up. Seems you were too careless. N now hold on just a second. As the women searched them, they discovered the oak leaf in Show's pocket. W what is this? I I it's nothing. The women were shocked at what they saw and immediately prostrated themselves before Sho. Please forgive us. Why are they apologizing? Beats me. As it turned out, that leaf was a sign of their being the forest gods most favored. We we meant no offense to one chosen by the gods. Okay. Now I get it. The queen begged the pair to save them from the centaur scourge. We would all be in your debt. I guess maybe she doesn't talk like that. Whatever. <laughs> Sho said he'd do it and whispered something in the queen's ear. All right, then. Uh, I feel like she was asking me to, you know. <laughs> they would leave open the gate and the doors to the treasury and then hide themselves deep within the castle. Sho, we'll take him out from over there. No matter what they try, they won't be able to escape. The next day, a massive horde of centaurs once again surrounded the castle. <laughs> and once again they cry, Rara! Rara! <laughs> Ra! But they all cooled their horses. Get it? Cool cooled their horses? Get it? <laughs> but they all cooled their horses when they saw the castle gate open and no one inside. Hey! The gate's already open! They must have run away! Meanwhile, they all piled into the castle and pushed their way into the treasury. Who oh boy! They got all kinds of loot in here! <laughs> what a score! One by one, they shouldered a crate and carried it up the narrow steps. Ugh, this sure is heavy! Sho drew back his bow from where he was hiding and let the arrows fly. You fools! You won't get away from me! An arrow struck one centaur square in the chest and his loot went tumbling to the ground. <coughs> Another centaur appeared and he too was struck right in the chest. <coughs> Sho drew his sword, and with its gleaming blade he struck down those who were left behind. Think you can get away? Ha! The gate's been shut behind you! <laughs> Who'd have thought these were all a bunch of weenies? Sho wiped the blood from his sword, put it back in its sheath, and fetched Squirrel. That's how you cut out a cancer! <laughs> you sure scared him! The pair stood triumphant over the centaur's bodies where they lay among their stolen treasure. All this blood sure makes things slippery. You must have mowed down 20 or 30 of them. <laughs> you must have mowed down 30 or 50 feral centaurs. Mysteriously, as they stepped outside, not even a shadow of the castle remained. So... I'm not entirely certain how to take this. Okay, so the Japanese literally says, Fushigi ya itsunomanika gin no oshiro wa kage mo naku. So, Fushigi ya, mysteriously, or it's a mystery that, itsunomanika, unnoticed, gin no oshiro wa, the uh, silver castle, kage mo naku, has no shadow. So, does this mean that, like, the castle is so blindingly brilliant that it doesn't cast a shadow, or... Because of what Sho says in the panel, it somehow implies that, like, maybe the castle is disappearing or has it gone somewhere. I'm not really certain. 
because in the panel he says, <laughs> Shiro wa doko ni itta? Where, where did it go? Where's the castle gone? Why, why are you asking me? So, there's an implication here that something has happened, but I'm not really sure what. Anyway. Final panel. The forest had been dyed a deep red, and it was now well into autumn. Ah, summer is gone, and autumn is finally here. And scene. Bit of a weird... And also weirdly violent one today. But that's all for this week's episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Alternatively, if you have a better explanation for what's going on here, feel free to leave a comment. <laughs> and as always, if you really like this video, you can support my work on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga, all one word. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links for which can be found in the description below. I will be back next week with another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, but until then, don't let the man, or a slightly confusing narrative, get you down. Bye!